Romans 8, 28. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Welcome, welcome today. This beautiful day is a little chilly, but this beautiful day, this beautiful Wednesday, for those of you who are joining in, hi, Juliana from New York. It's a blessing to see you here. And uh, just great. It's great to be here today on this Wednesday. Um, I'm just going to jump in. I'm not going to be all long today. Um, I have a flight to catch. But anyways, we, uh, we're going to get the message in. And, uh, and then I'm going to meet you guys here, meet everyone here on next Wednesday and next Saturday. Yes. So anyways, our message for today, for those of you who are joining, maybe joining from, hi, Wilma, you're on Facebook today. Good. Good to see you here. Uh, those who may be on YouTube, I know Shirley and probably Gail and a few others that are on the, uh, the YouTube. And so we're going <clears> to <throat> keep building that. And then soon we'll be on Instagram as well. So we want to reach the masses. And I thank those of you who are helping me to reach the masses. You know who you are and has really blessed the ministry. And we thank you. So my, my message today is life crashes. No matter how many or bad your life crashes have been, God can fix and mend them all. What looks bad to you is just an opportunity for God to show his goodness. You know, things always look bad for us. We always look our human eyes and, 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 and but you know, the opportunity is just an opportunity for God to show his goodness. Think about it. The cross of Jesus was not good. It was awful. It was excruciating pain. But what looked at that time like the greatest tragedy in human history turned out to bring about the greatest good of all. The payment for our sin that makes life with God is forever possible. And maybe that is where you are today. I don't know. At the crash side of your life's encounter, you're hurt, devastated, and certainly you were unprepared for this to happen, but it did. Hi there, there, Claudia from North Carolina. Good to see you. So we look at what we're talking about today is uh, life crashes. And I just mentioned, no matter how bad or how, how many or how bad your life crashes have been, God can fix and mend them all. He can mend all of our brokenness. He's the mender. Uh, people, someone say, well, the marriage crashed, uh, crashed into a divorce, the children crashed into an unexpected teenage pregnancy, the siblings crashed into drug and alcohol addiction, your best friend crashed into foreclosure, your finances crashed into bills and debts and liens, your friendship crashed into betrayal, your job crashed into unemployment, your health crashed into a disease no one in the family ever uh, has, your business crashed uh, into more or less than gain, your church ministry crashed into empty pews. We all have experienced some form of unexpected life crash. But then isn't that how most crashes happen? Suddenly. That's how crash happens, suddenly, unexpectedly, inconveniently. That's what happened with crashes. Well, believe it or not, but sometimes crashes work for your good. Sometimes, and we've heard, heard testimonies of people saying, you know what? They were in a rush trying to get somewhere. And they had an accident. Uh, they crashed into something. And later on on the news, they heard uh, there was an accident uh, where they were headed. And God delayed them. We've heard those testimonies. It was for their good that something happened. Not just, well, it wasn't good that Peter tore up my car. But at least you still have your life. So we can't look at everything and say, well, you know, that just wasn't good. Hi, Ruth from Monterey. Good afternoon. So believe it or not. Sometimes crashes work for your good. Sometimes they end up revealing what you would have never found out any other way until it was too late and devastation destroyed it all. Some familiar words in the Bible fit perfectly right here. And they are found in Romans 8, 28. And I'm going to be quoting that scripture. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Now take that note that he did not say all things are good, but he did say all things work together for good. That's what he said. That's what his word says. It says, we'll say, with no weapon formed against you, you shall prosper. 
He didn't say the weapons wouldn't form. He said they would not prosper. So we're going to have problems. We're going to have life crisis. We're going to have all kinds of things that comes with this earthly life that we're living. That's a part of life. You know, we can't have everything perfect and everything good. But we have a Savior who will be celebrating this Sunday, Resurrection Sunday. So for, so this is familiar in, in Romans 8, 28. It says, all that know that all things work together for good to them that love God. We have to, we, you know, some people just stop. You know, it amazed me because people don't stop at something that's important. They should say, <clears throat> they should say to them that love God. But people say, you know, all things work together for good. But what's the rest of the verse? To them that love God. To them who are uh, the called according to his purpose. Did he say all things work together for good? He said, he, he said, now take note that he did not say all things are good, but he said they work together for good. And, um, and so we have to say that entire uh, verse so we can understand. You know, I found out something quite interesting. Um, now I believe at some point in time, we've all heard the term motto uh, phrase, gong ho. I know you all probably heard it. I've heard it. But you do not know what it means. Well, it means extremely excited and enthusiastic by doing something, overly zealous. However, its Chinese origin is a word taken to mean work together. That's what gang ho, gang ho mean. And it has been adopted as an uh, unofficial slogan by the United States Marines. They said gang ho, thereby comes to mean being extremely excited and enthusiastic about some, doing something, overly zealous. And do you know why you are gang ho? Why? You gong ho, be you should be gong ho. Let me go back and say that because you're happy, you're jealous, you're overly jealous, <clears throat> zealous. But do you know why you should be gong ho over your life and over your life crashes? Because it's all working together for your good. That's what the word of God says for your good. Yes, you can be excited, even about your trials, you can be excited about your struggles, about your hardships. Yes, you can even feel gong ho because at the end of the day, they are all working together for your good. This is the word of God. It's not what JP said. It's the word of God. Will they all be good? Nope. Will they all feel good? Nope. Will they all look good? Nope. But they all work together for your good. Yep. That's what the word of God says. Every time that you crash into is going to work together for your good. Someday, some way, somehow. And how can I be sure of it? Because the word of God does not lie. Therefore, if God said it will, you will see that it will. Let us review again the Romans 8, 28 again. Say, we know with great confidence that God who is deeply concerned about us causes all things to work together as a plan for good for those who love God, to those who are called according to his plan and purpose. Romans 8, 28. There are a few things to take note of in this translation. And we know. The word know means to have knowledge of through observation, inquiry, information, or experience. To be sure of something, to be familiar with. It. Is in old origin means to recognize and identify. And somewhere down the course of the years, we can all say we know God is a keeper of his word. How? Because we've observed it, inquired about it, heard information of confirmation through the testimony of others, and best yet, we've experienced it for ourselves. We have great confidence in God and his ability because we are familiar with it. We can recognize it and identify it because we've seen and experienced it before. And if he did it then, he can still do it now. So why should we be worried? After all, the same text also says, who is deeply concerned about us, who is deeply concerned about us enough that he has told us to cast what all of our cares on him. He did not say, cast some of them, cast a few of them, cast a little bit. Maybe you should. No, he didn't say that. 
we should not be worried. After all, the same the same text also says, "Who is deeply concerned to concern about us?" So why should we be children who cry when we have a father who is concerned about us enough about us that he has told us to cast all of our cares on him? Hi, Phil. It's good to see you from Memphis. Hi, Celine. I'm so happy to see you on. I'm so happy to see you here today, and we continue to pray for your healing. You casting, we casting all our cares, all, and when he said all the cares, all our anxieties, all of our worries, all of our affection, all of our concerns, once and for all on him. But we, 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 we get in trouble. Hi, Cheryl from Madison. Good to see you on. We get in trouble because we still want to help him. We still want to help him. He doesn't need our help. He said, just, I, oh, I, I want you all to just trust me. Just trust me. I have gotten so in the habit of trusting him. I don't care what, what it looks like. I don't care what it seems like. I trust God because he comes through every time. He comes through every time. And so I trust him. So with the learn, he said, I didn't tell you to try to fix it. I have someone I pray with all the time. And I, and sometimes I know she get a little mad at me, but I said, why are you constantly trying to, why are you in God's way? Why are you constantly trying to help him out? Get out of his way. He can't do what he's trying to do because you always try to help him. He doesn't need our help. He needs us to be faithful. He needs us to trust him. He needs us to pray. He needs us to trust him. He don't need us to try to fix it because he alone can do it. So he said, I want you to cast all of your cares. I don't care what you're going through. I don't care what your day is like. I care, but I don't want you worried about it. I don't want you to have anxiety attacks. Because when it's all said and done, you're still going to be worried. You're still going to have anxiety attacks. It may be worse. So he said, all your worries, all your concerns, once and for all, cast them on me. Because I care about you with deep, deepest affection. And I'll watch over you very carefully because you're my child. So I love you. I care about you. The Bible further says causes, it causes all things to work together. That means as a plan for good. That sounds a lot like Jeremiah 29, 10, 11 to me. This is God's word on the subject. I love how it's worded in the Message Bible. I just love to just direct what it in the Message Bible. That he said, that's how I would say it. He said, look. This is God's word on the subject. He said, I'll show up and take care of you as I promised and bring you back home. This is his word. He said, I'll show up and take care of you as I promised and bring you back home. I know what I'm doing. This, this has translated in the messenger Bible. He said, I know what I'm doing. I have it all planned out. Plans to take care of you, not to abandon you. That's why when I do the salvation of prayer, I said, God cannot, and he will not abandon you. He says that in his word. I'm not going to abandon you. I have plans to give you the future you hope for. That's in the message Bible. Listen, when God has it all planned out to take care of you, what do you need a backup plan for? People say, well, I got a plan B and a plan C and plan A don't work. Well, God don't need all of those plans. He, don't, he just got plan A and don't need the B and C and all of that. He said, I already have it all planned out to take care of you. So you don't have to go and run and get a backup plan. Well, if, well, if the, how does that sound? To say, well, if God doesn't do it, well, I, I, I know he can, but maybe he won't. Well, we just trust him to do what his words say. He has plans to take care of us. We Now, we may he may not do them on our time frame, or he may not do it the way we want it done, but he will do it. So we have to trust him. When you say, Carol Ann, you're guilty of this, we have to trust him. And that's where we get in trouble because we start helping him out. And then we mess up. And then we go to say, well, well, Lord, I tried, but he didn't ask you. So we, we always make a mess of things when we try to take it into our own hands and do it without consulting him or not just giving it. And really, He said, I want you to, to, to just relinquish it to me. That means just give it to him. Surrender it all to me. You don't have to worry about a backup plan. Maybe if you have that, maybe if you have some humans, some other people, but God is not a man that he will lie. So his ways 
and thoughts are dip much higher than ours. So your friends, you may need a backup plan. Your spouse, you may need a backup plan. I don't know. Your children, you may need a backup plan. Your friends, because some people can be fickle, and some people will tell you what I'm going to do, and they never do it. Have you seen all those kind of people before? And maybe you haven't. They never follow through on anything. And so they, there you go. Then you got to get, because you have to have a plan. Because you And when you call, say, you're working with somebody and you know how they are. You say, I have to have a, a plan B or C. Because they never follow through. That's what people will do. People will let you down all the time. But not God. And you can't say, well, he didn't ask me. In his time, he did. He did. He, he does things his way. Not your way. Now, he may answer some of your prayers you want, but God's going to do it his way. So he said, I, I, I'm, I'm here to take care of you. I got some plans, but I all plan out to take care of you. And you don't have to have a backup plan with me. Maybe with other people, but not with me. We know that God works all things together for good for the ones who love God. For those who are called according to his purpose. Just give the per people the entire verse. Don't just say, well, we know God works all things together for good. For the ones who love God. Put that in there for those who are called according to his purpose. It's like God said, with my people, he know who his, his sheep, uh, they, they recognize the boys. Some people, they don't, they don't have no kind of relationship with God. My favorite part of this translation is God works. Okay. My favorite translation is God works. Hi, Gertrude from South Africa, Cape Town. Good to see you on. We know that God works all things together for good for the ones who love God, for those who are called according to his purpose. My favorite part of this translation is God works. How awesome to know that no matter what or who is working against me, when God is working for me, neither they nor it can do me any harm. And that's what he'll tell you. Neither it nor me can do any harm. When God is working for me, neither they nor it can do me any harm. In Romans 8, 31, 39. So what do you think with God on our side like this? Romans 8, 31, 39. So what do you think with God on our side like this? How can we lose? If God did not hesitate to put everything on the line for us, how can we lose? How can we lose? If God did not hesitate to put everything on the line for us, embracing our condition and exposing himself to the worst by sending his own son, is there anything else he, he wouldn't gladly and freely do for us? No, we can't lose. Good to see y'all wonder. How awesome to know that no matter what or who is working against me, when God is working for me, neither they nor it can do me any harm. Romans 8, 31, 39. So what do you think? With God on our side like this, how can we lose? If God did not hesitate to put everything on the line for us as we get ready to celebrate Resurrection Sunday, put his life on the line for us, for our sins, while we were still sinners, yes. Like I say, he didn't wait till we were saved while we were still sinners. So what do you think? With God on our side like this, how can we lose? If God did not hesitate to put everything on the line for us, embracing our condition when we keep messing up, and exposing himself to the worst by sending his own son. Is there anything else he wouldn't gladly and freely do for us? He said, we're his children. He's our. He said, ye who are weak and weary and heavy laden, come to me. I'll give you rest. Come to me. Come lay. Come sit at my feet and be blessed. He loves us. You say, one, we have not cause we ask not. And we ask, believe these verses. Hallelujah. Yes, indeed. The word of that's what the word of God said. You say, what, what do you think? You think he's not going to do it? God sent his own son. And who dare tangle with God by messing with one of God's chosen? I say this to people all the time. Keep your mouth off of God's children. Keep your mouth off of them. You don't know where they stand in the spiritual realm. Leave them alone. Leave them alone. God got this. When you say the Holy Spirit is rolling all the way to Tennessee from you, hey, God is so good. He is so good. And he just wants us to just trust him. When you say, dirt you a God on our side, who can be against us? With him on our side, who, who would even dare? I say that to Satan. I said, I dare you. I, 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 
Are you crazy? That's how I talk to him. I, yeah, you come up in here and you know who I belong to. You know my father. And you want to mess with me? You want to mess with my children? You want to mess with my ministry? You want to, are you crazy? I, that's how I talk to him. And that's how you have to talk to him. I, I, who will, why would you even dare to tangle with me and you know who my father is, Satan? Why would why you want to send one of your little minions to mess with me? Because you're going to get eaten up alive. I dare you. Some people say I double dare you to come and mess with me. You know who my father is. And you know what he said. You can't do me any harm. You can try. And you can be, and you're good at it. But we know the end of the story. We know the end of the story in the chapter. If God didn't hesitate to put to, to, to put everything on the line for us, he put everything on the line by sending his son. And so who, who would dare tangle with God by messing with one of God's chosen and his children? Who would dare even point a finger? The one who died for us, who was raised to live for us, is in the presence of God at this very moment sticking up for us. Do you think anyone is going to be able to drive a wedge between us and Christ's love for us? There's no way. There's no way. Not trouble, not hard time, not hatred, not hunger, not homelessness, not bullying threats, not backstabbing. But folks got to stick out the knife in their hand, trying to stab you some more. Not even the worst sins listed in scripture. They kill us in cold blood because they hate you. We are sitting ducks. They pick us up one by one. None of this faces us because Jesus loves us. I'm convinced that nothing, nothing living or dead, angelic or demonic today or tomorrow, high or low, thinkable or unthinkable, absolutely nothing can get between us and God's love because of the way that Jesus, our master, has embraced us. That's in the Messenger Bible. Therefore, with God at work, why do you dare to worry? We know that God is always at work for the good of everyone who loves him. They are the ones God has chosen for his purpose in Romans 8, 28. And then my favorite part of this version is God is always at work. Family, we may, family and friends may have your back sometimes, even most of the time, but God has your back always. Always is defined as on all occasions, at all times, forever, repeatedly. Perpetual, ongoing. So no matter what life crash you encounter, you can rest assured that God has your back on all occasions. And at all times, forever and repeatedly. Thoughts like that make you better understand Solomon when he said, you'll take afternoon naps without a worry. You'll enjoy a good night's sleep. No need to panic over alarms or surprises or predictions that doomsday just around the corner. Because God will be right there with you. He'll keep you safe and sound. Proverbs 3, 21, 26. He, haven't, he hasn't moved anywhere. Where is our dwelling place? He may seem at a distance, but he's right there with us. And we know that all that happened to us is working for our good if we love God and we are fitting into his plan. My favorite part here is all that happens to us. It does not matter whether you are, uh, your life crashes physical, spiritual, mental, emotional, psychological, or, or financial. God is there to make it all work together for your good, no matter what has happened. Nothing is too big, too small or too insignificant to God. Everything about you means everything to him. Did you hear what I said? Everything about you means everything to him. We know that in everything, God works for the good of those who love him. They are the people he called because that was his plan. Romans 8, 28, my favorite part here is everything. Defined simply as nothing being left out. God would not miss a beat concerning anything that concerns you. He has everything in your entire life under control. Just because our hands can't handle it, you hear me say that, doesn't mean God hand, hands can handle it because everything is in his control. Under control in everything. Nothing is too big or too small or too insignificant to God. Everything about you means everything to him. And if everything is defined as nothing being left out, God would not miss a beat concerning anything that concerns you. He has everything in your entire life under control. He is not going to leave anything out. God is working everything out for your good. We know that God makes all things work together for the good of those who love him and are chosen to be a part of his plan. Romans 8, 28. My favorite part here, God makes all things work together. 
you are not subject to hoping that all the things will work themselves out. You know, you have some people say, well, I just hope it'll work out. God says he himself will make all things work together. One of the definitions that I love of the word make is to force something to work. And force is defined as to push into a specified position. And what position is God going to make and force your life crashes into? You guessed it, a good position. So no more worries. God will make it work in your favor and for your good. Would you say, Ruth, God will always see us through. Yes, yes, we thank him for his unconditional love. Like with man, they got a condition for everything. Meanwhile, the moment we get tired in the waiting, God's spirit is right alongside us, helping us along. If we do not know how or what to pray, it does not matter. He does our praying in and for us, making prayer out of our wordless sighs and our aching groans. He knows us far better than we know ourselves. He knows our pregnant condition and keeps us present before God. That's why we can be so sure that every detail in our lives of love for God is worked into something good. My favorite part here is every detail. Detail is defined as every small individual item, meaning God will not miss a thing that needs repairing in our life's crisis and our life crashes. I mean, he won't miss a thing. Would you say one to try and open the door? God closed it. There ain't nothing but Satan behind that closed door. Y'all know what to say. You sure know what to say. No matter how many or bad your life crashes have been, God can fix and mend them because he's the mender. He can handle all the brokenness. What looks bad to you is just an opportunity for God to show his goodness. Because our eyes always do what? Get us in trouble. Because we'll take a mold heel and make a mountain out of it. We'll do that in a heartbeat. But God said, look, you, it may look bad for you. I know what the doctor said. God said, I already knew what the doctor said before the doctor said it. But I am the master physician. And I'm going to grant you favor. I know what the bill collector was going to say. And I changed his heart. I fix hearts and all that. Attitudes, person, everything I fix. Because I lack nothing. I'm limitless. You may be limited, but your father is limitless. He owns it all. So he said, God can fix and mend them all. What looks bad to you is just an opportunity for God to show his goodness. Think about it. The cross of Jesus was not good. It was awful. It was excruciating pain. But what looked at that time like the greatest tragedy in human history, it turned out to bring about the greatest good of all, the payment for our sin that makes life with God forever possible. Yes, would you say one to Carol? Tell you, you make that mountain way bigger. That's what we'll do. We'll take the, the it's our little mole here. And when he, we get through with it, it's a giant mountain. And God said, you did that. So we have to leave that alone. Because God said, whatever life crash it is, I'm going to take care. Because you know what? It's going to work together for your good. And that's my message. I got it done in 30 minutes. That's why, because I want to give you a word of encouragement. Wednesday is my just encouraging you to get through it, make through the week. Because sometimes it gets a little difficult to get through the middle of the week. You start with Monday, it seems like you got a headache. You get to Wednesday, say, Lord, if I can just make it through. So Wednesday is my just passing through, just to give you words of encouragement to make it on through the week. Saturday, like I said, this weekend is Resurrection Sunday. And, and yes, indeed, we are so blessed that our Savior went to the cross and all they did and he rose again and he lives today forevermore and we're just blessed we're blessed yes when you say one to very encouraging enough to make you shout go ahead and shout because sometimes i run around the house because i feel so good and i'll be bouncing up and down on the, on the chair but god is good and i want to thank each one of you i want to thank you all for coming and taking time out because i know it's you know the weather's getting nice now and even though i am still a little chilly but it's getting nice now and, uh, and I want you all to just, you know, to continue to stand strong despite what may happen, despite what the situation may look like. Know that God is working it out for your good. It may look terrible, but God said, don't get in my way. I'll take care of it. John Teague, how are you from Haiti? I pray that all is well for you in Haiti. Good to see you on. We're getting ready to end, but I'm glad you made it. So please come back. Thank you, Wanda, and everyone on. Thank you. I pray that you all have a great week. Um, 
yes, and have a great weekend. And I'm going to see you on Saturday. And uh, just be blessed through this week. And just, you know, if you run into any challenges, know that God is working it for your good. And just stay faithful. Stay faithful. Trust him. And he'll, just trust God. Trust him. So thank you. Thank you, Jonty from Haiti, Juliana. Oh, yeah, Jonty Juliana is saying hi to you. Yes, and that you hold hate in your prayers. Thank you, Wanda. Thank you, my cheerleader. You're giving me good feedback. And Ruth, thank you from Monterey. Yes, John T. God is good all the time. Thank you, Celine from Perry, Georgia, and, and uh, Carol Ann from Monterey, Ruth from Monterey, and Wilma's from Wisconsin, and uh, Claudia from North Carolina, and Shirley on uh, YouTube, and Gail, and, and Devon. If I miss you, please forgive me because it seems like I miss your name all the time. So I just want to thank you. Thank you, Geraldine, for uh, making things happen today with me and getting things going. So I pray that you all be blessed and uh, keep me in prayer. And I'm going to keep you in prayer. And we're just going to stay faithful to the Lord. Uh, whatever our challenges are, we're going to stay faithful. So have a great day. Until we meet again, Jesus' delay is coming. I'll meet you all here on Saturday. Be blessed and have a great week.